Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video. So there's still a lot of hype around the new 2016 MacBook Pro. There's a heap of videos comparing it to the older 2015 model. We considered doing a video that was specific to video editing comparing the two, but there's already quite a few great options on YouTube as well. So instead we thought we'd compare the 2016 MacBook Pro to what a lot of people consider the Windows equivalent, which is the Dell XPS 15 inch 2016 model. So in this video we're going to compare the two for video editing, but we're also going to throw in the 2015 MacBook Pro as well. So this video is gonna be entirely focused around real world editing. We're not gonna look at benchmark scores at all. If you're interested in benchmark scores, there's a heap of other videos that will cover the benchmark scores of the three laptops. We're gonna try and keep this as close to apples and apples or apples to Dells as possible. So we'll be comparing rendering and exporting time in Adobe Premiere across the board, but we'll also throw some final cut comparisons in there as well. So we'll start out with the specs of the three systems. The Dell XPS 15 inch is the 2016 model, which has an Intel Core i7 2.6 gigahertz quad core processor, 16 gig of DDR4 RAM, and a two gigabyte Nvidia GeForce GTX 960M video card. And the 2016 MacBook Pro 15 inch has an Intel Core i7 2.7 gigahertz quad core processor, 16 gig of RAM, and a two gigabyte Radeon Pro 460 video card. The 2015 MacBook Pro is the 15 inch model with an Intel Core i7 2.5 gigahertz quad core processor, 16 gig of RAM, and a two gigabyte Radeon R9 M370X video card. So before we started any testing, we did make sure that the GPU rendering was enabled or that your Mercury playback engine was set to GPU across all of the systems. So that was OpenCL on the Macs, which was actually enabled by default once Adobe Premiere had been installed. On the Windows system, which was enabling the NVIDIA CUDA or CUDA, we actually went through three different sets of NVIDIA drivers before we could enable it. So once that was sorted, we copied the exact same project files and all the footage to the desktop of each of the three systems. So what this project contained is a six minute edit and a two minute edit of a 1080p mixed frame rate, mixed format, mixed bit rate edit, which is something that's pretty common when you're editing these days. So the first test we did was exporting the two minute version of this project across the three laptops. The settings we used to export were the YouTube 1080p preset built into the latest 2017 Adobe Premiere Pro. And the Dell XPS 2016 was the clear winner coming in at two minutes, 14 seconds, followed by the 2016 MacBook Pro at two minutes, 55, and then the 2015 MacBook Pro at three minutes, 42. So we ran the same test again, but using the six minute version of that edit. And once again, the Dell XPS 2016 came out on top with an export time of six minutes, 45 seconds, followed by the MacBook Pro 2016, with eight minutes, 58 seconds, followed by 12 minutes, 30 seconds on the 2015 MacBook Pro. So while there wasn't a huge difference exporting the two minute file across the three, you can see that exporting a larger file, exporting the six minute version has started to make a big difference. And if the difference between them is this much at a six minute export, then it's gonna be huge for a much larger project. So for the next test and to really put these systems under load, we decided to do a 4K test and still with Adobe Premiere across the board. So we created a new 4K project and we imported four video files that were all shot in 4K. We scaled these four clips down and positioned them all within the 4K frame and we repeated all the clips so they would all play continuously to the two minute mark. And then to take this up a notch further, we reversed two of the video clips across the entire length of the two minute clip. So really what we're exporting here is one 4K file that's made up of four 4K individual files all on the screen at once where two of them have been reversed for the entire two minute clip. The settings we used to export across the board were the YouTube 4K preset built into the latest 2017 Adobe Premiere Pro. The Dell XPS 15 inch 2016 took 18 minutes and 51 seconds to export the timeline. The 2016 MacBook Pro took 58 minutes and 42 seconds, whereas the 2015 MacBook Pro took one hour and 20 minutes. So that's a massive difference between the three. So what we thought we'd do next is bring Final Cut into the mix, Final Cut 10. 
So what we did is we recreated that 4K timeline, the two minute timeline that had four 4K video files all on screen on a 4K project where two of them had been reversed for the entire two minute clip. We also turned off background rendering in Final Cut 10 so that there was no caching or no pre-rendering done before we went to export. Then we ran two separate exports of this timeline. The first was just using the share to YouTube preset set to 4K, which you're probably thinking, yep, that's gonna be different between that and Adobe Premiere. So we also sent out via compressor and we keyed in the exact same settings, the same bit rate, the same resolution, everything exactly the same in Adobe Premiere. We made that same preset in compressor. And here are the results. The 2015 MacBook Pro did the export from Final Cut in four minutes, 55 seconds, and via compressor in six minutes, 20. And the 2016 MacBook Pro did the export from Final Cut in three minutes, 27, and five minutes, 13 through compressor. So comparing those export times, and again, with background rendering turned off, Final Cut versus Adobe Premiere, there is a massive difference in export time between the two. So these results are pretty interesting and it's definitely, definitely not what I expected. I can't believe that there's such a huge difference in exporting from Final Cut or even exporting from Final Cut via compressor versus exporting what is essentially the same timeline in Adobe Premiere, even on the same systems. Now I'm someone that uses both of these editing programs pretty much every week. All of my corporate and client work is done in Adobe Premiere and all the videos on this channel are done in Final Cut. So it's pretty interesting to compare what is essentially the same timeline being exported between the two using the exact same systems. So in regards to the performance or the smoothness of editing in that 4K project across Adobe Premiere and Final Cut, across all three systems, the Adobe Premiere project wasn't able to be played even at 1 8th quality. In Final Cut, we were able to play back that 4K timeline smoothly. It definitely had quality loss. We did have to set performance as the setting instead of quality. So I'm not sure of how much of a quality hit. It didn't look great, but it was definitely editable and, and enough that you could color grade and work with the footage. So I really didn't expect that there would be such a huge difference in export time for exporting what's essentially the same timeline in Final Cut and in Adobe Premiere. It's clear to say that if you're going to be using Adobe Premiere, then you should look at the Dell XPS 15 inch over the MacBook Pro. If you're already a Mac user and you wanna save a heap of time on your exports, then maybe Final Cut could be the answer for you. Now, if you're looking for a great comparison with full benchmarks and everything, specifically between the 2016 MacBook Pro and the 2015 MacBook Pro, then check out the video that's linked on screen now. I'll see you soon.